Hello folks, what's up man? Alright, what we have here is a 2010 2011 Toyota Corolla 141 with a 1NZ engine. Um, basically, this vehicle was in the car wash. They went to get the engine detailed, and basically, it's a no a crank, no start. Right, so the car wash asked me to come and check it out, right, and see if I can assist. Right, so I believe what they did was they serviced the engine bay, right. So I'm not sure if water got into the spark plugs or anything like that. So let's take all the spark plugs and see if water is down in the hole and down the cylinder and if it is then we blow it out um all right so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to check for compression um car was driving so i doubt the compression dropped off but i'm just gonna just to double check real quick right so i got my high tester here i'm just gonna hook it up right i'm just bring it closer so i'm gonna check for compression Right, I'm gonna do it on sync. Right, I'm not gonna tell it what um what cylinder I'm doing. Right, I'm just bringing closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. The glare, yeah. I know it's really sunny out here right now. All right, so let me just press start. I'm gonna go and crank the vehicle out. Oh. So let me just get your close up. All right, so basically it's telling me that one cylinder is really low or oh, and the rest is like let me see the percentage. I'm seeing 56 100 Let's let me um no, I want to unplug it. 82 and 79. So, we got low compression. I'm not sure which cylinder it is. I could have done a sink and it'll be able to tell me what compression, um, what cylinder has low compression. Let me just hook up my sink so I can um, narrow down what compression, is, what um, cylinder is giving me trouble. Okay, right now the battery is, is low. I'm trying to do this real quick. All right, um, this is a, a Toyota, so Toyota does have Four plug, four um, pins going to the coil. So I'm gonna just back probe off one of the signals, right? Um, so on Toyota, the you'll get the one that's looking, the ones that are looking the same as your power and ground, and the other one is IGT on IGF. I'm just gonna pick. I'm just gonna go over cylinder number one here. I'm going after the second pin. Right, um, I don't have the wiring diagram, but I'm just, you know, going at it. So, it looked like there's a red wire, most likely it doesn't power. The pink wire with the, probably was white, with the black stripe is the ground. Tell you, they normally use um, white wires and black stripe as the ground, right? They have a black wire, so that's most likely will be the signal, the IGT. And the confirmation will be the yellow. Right, so let me just set back up this and do a sync. Right, so at least we know what which um cylinder is giving the trouble. As you can tell the battery is running low. Basically, I wasn't able to get it because the battery is low. Um, I'm gonna see if I get a, like a jump pack or something like that to get this battery up. Um, or oh, another battery. Hold on, let me see if I can get one. All right, so I was able to get my hands on another battery. So let me just change this one out. So let's 
fuck in this battery and see if you can diagnose this car. Real quick. Right, negative, negative, positive, positive. This and here, right? So let's um see if we could get a better test and um, some better test results with a good working battery. I don't gotta tighten it all the way in, I'll just rest it right here. Alright, so I'm gonna hook on to my negative my positive and my negative again. Alright, I got my sink off for number one. Right, so let me sync off for number one. All right, so I'm gonna crank right now. Oh man, hold on real quick. Oh, I wasn't able to get proper results. All right, so let's see what's why is that. and do this so I don't flood the system. Alright, so basically it's telling me stop cranking. Alright, so wait, I'm seeing two cylinders with low compression while the Others are up, right? Um, is it that because it was trying to crank it so much that the fuel wash the engine? I'm not sure, right? So, um, the fire now there's one, three, four, two. So, number three and number two cylinder low compression, right? So, what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna pull the plugs probably if I um, squirt some oil or something like that or probably it might be able to bring the compression back up to get the car to start up so let me see what could be done alright so let me just let's take a picture of this for the customer alright so remember the fire order is one three four two Right, and A is, is one, right? So then I can also do a manual compression test, but that, as I said, the vehicle was driving. I went to get a, a, well, a detail, car detail, and now we don't want to stop. So it seems like, it's like compression is the issue. So what I'm gonna do next is Let's, let's remove the the coils. If we remove the coils, we might be able to um, put some oil into the chamber and the cylinder and get this vehicle to start back. All right, so this is kind of the perfect timing to show how to do compression check on an engine. All right, so you don't have to. This is an OTC. Um, I'll leave the part number. 5605 in the description um, but you don't have to buy this big kit right um, I had to use it to be honest uh, go more high-tech but I just want to get a visual I'm going to do a manual compression to just do get a visual reading of what is going on in cylinder like I said the vehicle was running so I'm not sure if all oh, it was they kept cranking that they um, washed the engine basically Wash the cylinder by keep cranking the vehicle. I'm not sure. Let me just see what's going on. Right, let me just take this key off. It's kind of annoying. 
All right, so we're gonna do what we call a, what I did first was a compression test. Now I'm gonna do, a, well, a relative compression test. My apologies. So this is a compression test I'm gonna do. Yeah. All right, it's a manual compression test. I'm just gonna plug this coil. Cause you don't want the spark to be, just, you know, all over. There's the let me get an extension. Right now, um, the socket set is a deep. So basically, is a that kit. I left. I will leave that also in the description too. All right, this is just a. Like you know, sometimes you got some sockets, some um, spark plugs in some real, like, hard to reach places. Let's, let's get a close up. Oh, this is number one. Right, you see how it folds up? This is number one spark plug. It's a little wet. It smells like fuel. Alright, now. Um, Get the kit out. Check the compression. Which one is it? This one. Yep. The straight valve in, is in it, so you don't have to force it. Right. Just take your time and just run it up with your hand real quick. And you're just gonna crank it and count to like five by watching the compression gauge. Alright, so the compression gauge, I'm just gonna put it in a way so it don't fall. I'm gonna crank the crank the I hold it to like five seconds. Switch the key off. Let's see what much compression we got. That's really low. Let's let me let me, let me recheck my connection. In fact, let me use another. Make sure it's properly seated and sealed. See what that is. So, yeah, hundred and fifty. Which is not good. So, 150 psi. Let me get play closer so y'all can see. So this 150 on cylinder number one. Alright, I'm gonna put the plug back in. I don't take the plug out because, say for instance, you got like a, a head gasket issue, right? Like um, compression leaking across the cylinder. That means now uh, it's gonna be leaking number three, could be leaking at number two or number, you know, or number three could be leaking into number four and you'll be getting some like high numbers and thinking all as well. So I tend to leave my, everything in when I'm doing my checks. So let's do, matter of fact, we can take off all these because we don't need the spark. Right? And what I'm gonna do too, I'm on this, um, this kind of fuel while I'm at it too because I don't need it. All 
And basically, I'm just gonna be doing the same thing they probably did was his wash the cylinder. Oh man, this is very brittle. I gotta be careful. I'm going after compression on this car because this car have a is high mileage and the customer is aware that he we need to change the engine so I'm not sure if you know it's about that time but he did come here driving so gotta make sure it's working I mean he went to the he went to the car wash and the vehicle was driving it's extremely hot today <laughs> it's like probably like 30 or 40 degrees 30 35 degrees or something like that all right so let's pop all this off all right so we're just checking the mechanical integrity of the, um, the engine See is if it have its um, have ability to you know to seal the valve will be sealing the, the um, piston rings will be doing what it's supposed to be doing um, also I'm not worried about spark fuel I'm getting fuel I'm getting spark so it's not that at all it sound like the you know the starter is not really you know doing much work when you on the cadence of the the engine Let's take these out inspect them make sure they're not fouled up leave it in order All right so that was number one I did I got one fifty I'm going after number two so number three and number two had the low compression. Let's see how the plugs is. This is number. This is number. Sorry, kind of blurry. This is number two. I like do it of course because I was cranking and they were cranking yeah, so I have got burned on with using relative compression before so I normally follow up with it on a uh, manual this is number two. We're gonna crank it for five seconds also. That's number two. Let's see what we got. We got one. What is this? We got like let's say one sixty-five on number two. Supposed to start, but as I said, probably low compression due to um, water was got into it or, or it's wet. Or so if um, what you call it the fuel from they trying to crack it, probably wash the engine. If it is the engine, you could try to rebuild. But seeing that the age of the vehicle is like 300, 300, uh, 300,000 kilometers on it already, I won't recommend rebuilding this. 
Um, we could rebuild it if we get in the pods, but. This is number three. We could rebuild it if we get in the pods for it, but. Customer had this for a while. This is. Yeah, for a few years now, and. I mean, probably service time. You know? This is number three I'm gonna do here. Three was the lowest. All right, don't crank. Also, let's go. Hold it for five seconds. So we got 150, 165. We got not bad, 170. I was gonna say it could be cylinder wash. Could be. You know how we crank in the compression building back up. Don't be surprised if we put matter of fact I might just swap all these um plugs also while I'm at it and see what's up. I'm just putting it back in real quick just to do this test. I'm gonna swap these plugs out. This is number this is number four. This is number four. So we got one fifty, one sixty five, one seventy. What I'm gonna do is squirt some oil in there. I could probably use the ball scope too and go in. And see how the inside the engine looks. Alright, so this is number four. It is hot. This is number four. What we got? So we got one. Oh no, we got, yeah, we got like 190, 195. So it's probably that the compression is coming up with this good battery. Um, what next, what next? What would we do? Probably would, um, you know, take out the plugs, change them out. Squirt some um, oil in the cylinder and see if I can get it to start. Alright, let me just go and get the oil bottle. Alright, with the injectors and the coil still unplugged, some oil in the, the engine. I'm gonna rotate the engine and see if that um, I can restore somewhat some more compression. Engine right, so now I'm getting a little resistance. Not as much as I would like to, but it's still getting somewhat not more than before.
So let's pop these injectors back in. Before we do that, I should just crank it real quick. No, I'm not gonna crank it. I'm gonna pop this back in. Injectors in the coils. Trying to keep these things, you know, simple as much as, as I can. Um, all right, got those on. Let's crack and see what's going on. from all the uh, unburned gas and, and also all the uh, unburned gas and oil that's in the chamber you're gonna get that right until it burns out but like I said this was a no crank no start this engine has a lot of mileage on it and because of the, all the mileage it has the compression and water got in to the engine to the plug and I wasn't able to start. Right, so lessons learned. <laughs> I'm gonna advise a guy in a car wash place anytime he's anytime he's um in physical. Yeah, anytime he's like detailing vehicles, he need to probably cover the coils you know he got bummy he got scared because he thought you know he damaged something else and you know he was he messed up you know someone's engine the person came driving and he basically you know we had we had to tow the vehicle here so he thought he was gonna be out of pocket a little bit but I told them let me just take a crack at it and see what I can do to get it to stop. Alright so I said we're gonna sum that up as when you like engine when you clean the engine try to cover the coils so, to prevent water from going down in the engine and yeah that's it really alright so customer gonna be ecstatic that he got his vehicle back up and running um hey yeah, that's what's up so thanks for watching you know appreciate all the comments all the you know don't forget to like subscribe criticism doesn't matter you know what can i have done differently i did a relative compression i checked for spark first i checked for um fuel i got that it's not what it wasn't mass airflow or something like that and with that now i was able to narrow it down to compression so when i did my relative compression test right it showed me that i had two cylinders was low on compression so what i did i'm just i'm just doing a little summary real quick um for those it might help someone right what i did is basically uh build back the compression by squirting some oil in the chamber so in the cylinder so you can um you know like build you know the oil rings could expand and, and unstuck and whatever happened. Right so we're gonna call that fixed. Take it easy.